Oh, just a minute. I'm getting dressed. Mr. Kirst, have you recently returned from Churston? Uh, yes, yes. Indeed I have. Have you seen the papers? And to think that you might have rubbed shoulders with the killer. Imagine that. Mr. Kirst, are you all right? You don't seem well. My apologies. My throat is burning. My head feels heavy. It's ever since the war, you know. Since my injury, my head has never been the same. Poirot, it's a pleasure to be with you again after all these years. I looked for a gift to thank you, and I found this propelling pencil. An authentic collector's item. You spoil me, mon ami. And you more so by sharing investigations. Do not underestimate the help you are to me as things. Intellect is not everything. There is also goodwill, and you are not short of that. Later, I will ask you to help me tidy up the room and bring some chairs. Our guest will be here soon. Ah! Is Thora Grey coming? Naturally. She is a fascinating young woman, n'est-ce pas? Oh, come on, Poirot. I'm a married man. And Miss Grey has already been courted by Frank and Clark. Poirot, our guests will be here soon. We must prepare ourselves. I should take advantage of the silence to examine them. Donald is always on edge. Donald Fraser is very nervous at the moment, even if he is trying hard to control himself. She appears to have taken more care with her appearance than the last time. She's looking at Mr. Fraser out of the corner of her eye. Did she make herself beautiful for him? Franklin Clark always seems at ease, regardless of what he is. Something that's unique to people who travel. Franklin Clark, I hope to concentrate on my guests. The song says, Sometimes I love a blonde who comes from Eden by way of Sweden. But I am not sure that this blonde is an angel. Sometimes I love a brunette, sometimes I love a blonde. That's what the song says. I wish to thank you all for coming. I wanted to bring everyone close to the victims here in order to unmask the murderer. Get to the point, Mr. Poirot. What do you want from us? You are an intelligent woman, Mademoiselle Barnard, and I'm sure that you have already understood my intentions. You think that if we put our heads together, we might come up with something new? I am convinced of it. 
What I ask is that you search your memories. The murderer must have left some trace. Yes, he must have prepared his crimes very carefully. Tout à fait. He did not get to Bexhill at midnight in order to strangle a young girl whose name by chance starts with B. Must we go into that? Mr. Fraser, please get a grip on yourself. Well, I want to help you, but I don't remember anything else. Nothing I haven't already said. And you, Mademoiselle Barnard, did your sister say if she was seeing another man? She never would have told me. Why would she hide the fight from you? Betty knew I didn't approve of her behavior. Her flirting was spoiling any chance she might have had. Tell me, mademoiselle, what did you talk about with your sister? Silly things. Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother bought her a brand new pair. The day it happened, she was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor mummy. Your sister used to sing, I believe. Did she ever perform in public? She dreamt about it, but she had a very bad cough. It troubled her greatly. She had to cancel auditions and miss lots of opportunities. A pity. Yes, she sang well, but that doesn't tell us much about the murderer. Qui sait? In any case, we now have enough information to draw up a relatively precise psychological profile. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. So, ladies and gentlemen, we can now surmise without too much risk of error that our adversary is calculative, sure of himself, a seducer of outstanding intelligence, that he has plenty of self-control and that he likes railways. It's a good start. Other meetings may be necessary. I hope that you will be able to come back again. Well, it's just that... Well, Mademoiselle Drawer, do you wish to help us or not? Oh, Mr. Poirot, don't be so harsh. It's normal that people helping with this inquiry should be reimbursed. Starting with you, Miss Drower, please allow me to pay for your train tickets. Oh, sir, I cannot accept. But you must. Mademoiselle, I may not be rich, but my brother left a fortune which will be mine. Mr. Clark, that's very generous of you. Well, someone has to foot the bill. Mr. Poirot, would it be possible for you to come back to Devon? Lady Clark has expressed a wish to see you. We'll adjust her medicine so she'll not be too drowsy. But of course, I shall come the day after tomorrow if it is convenient. Thank you all for coming. We will meet again soon. The meeting was most fruitful. Really? Hastings, I believe now we have everything we need to find a common point between the victims. Now it is time for us to use our grey matter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The 
refers to victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Churston. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. Thank you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Turkey. Are you going on holiday, mademoiselle? Not exactly, Mr. Poirot. Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs, but naturally she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. This poor woman is very ill. This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. The Clark residence. Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. Here is the skeleton key. Ah, oh, Mr. Poirot. Oh, I feel better now. Thank you for your help. You asked for me, chère madame? Yes. Yes, of course, I wish to speak with you. But what was it about? No doubt. You wish to talk to me about what happened to your husband? Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? Not yet, chère madame. There was a great many people in Chester on the day of the murder. Indeed. People go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombe's side. So, there were no strangers around the house that day? Who said that? The people who live here. Your brother-in-law, Miss Grey. Miss Grey? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, 
but I insisted she should go immediately. You are entitled to do so, naturally. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Oh. I've finished with this subject. This subject will probably be useful to me. This subject will probably be useful to me. This subject will probably be useful to me. The mechanism appears to be broken. that Hastings will not be cross with me. Does not make any sound. What are we talking about? Ah, yes. Uh, uh, Thora Grey. Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her. But for me, she was nothing but a hypocrite. You're probably right, madame. You have seen through her. I'm so pleased that I've oh, convinced you. Well, I appear to have been wrong about Thora Gray. So you all agree how nice it is to be all of the same mind. Miss Gray did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Gray? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at eleven o'clock I saw her talking to someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man, with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not, not a gentleman. It would be best to leave her to sleep now. The telephone in the hall is ringing.
Hello? Poirot, is that you? Hastings here. Thank you for calling. Have you received a new letter from the murderer? No, thank goodness. How are things in Churston? I question Lady Clark, but I will not leave until I have examined everything of interest to me here. Fortunately, Franklin is absent, and I have a skeleton key. Have you seen Thora Gray again? Briefly. But rest assured, I intend to summon her to London soon. She's a fascinating girl. But secretive. I would like to ask her a few questions. Poirot, she wouldn't hurt a fly. Each to his own, my friend. Yours are pretty often mine old ladies that have the maladies. Poirot, are you mocking me? No ill intended, rest assured. A bientôt, mon ami. The door is locked. This unit contains the medical records for Sir Carmichael Clark's patients. Let us study them closely and see if there are any familiar names. No dust on the records from A to D. They've been handled recently. No known names. Disappointing. Lots of dust. The records from E to Z have not been touched for years. No known names. Disappointing. A dark dragon for a bright-haired maid. See. I've already seen similar daggers. Attention, Franklin. Task list. A. Ordering Lady Clark remedies. Done. B. Tidying up real estate property files. Done. C. Calling the lawyer about inventory. Done. D. Update the tenant farmer list. Done. E. Update land rent accounting. Done. F. Ordering a restock of arsenic. Done. P.S. I have left on the living room table some of my things I don't want to keep. The locket and the dagger. I am sure you know why. Thora. <laughs> 